Thanks for joining us today for an introduction to the Heart Score. My name is Will Niven, and with me today I have Barbara Backus, the original developer of the Heart Score. Barbara, why do we need chest pain risk stratification tools at all? I think the best way to illustrate this is if we would imagine ourselves in an emergency department that sees around 100,000 patients a year. Approximately 6,000 of these patients will present with chest pain, but only 1,000 of them will actually be experiencing an acute coronary syndrome. So for the remainder of the patients, we need a method of differentiating those patients that are low risk from those that are intermediate or high risk for cardiac chest pain. So what's wrong with good old-fashioned clinical judgment or gestalt? In a study by Rick Body and colleagues, they showed that when an emergency physician considers a patient chest pain as unlikely to be ischemic, then there's still up to a 9% chance that the final diagnosis will turn out to be ACS. So the original studies that you conducted and subsequent validations used the endpoint of major adverse cardiac event, or MACE. What is MACE and why was it chosen? MACE is a composite endpoint that incorporates myocardial infarction, cabbage, revascularization or death at 30 to 42 days after presentation. All of the worldwide validation studies of the heart score show that for patients with a heart score of 0 to 3, the risk of MACE is approximately 2%. For a heart score of 4 to 6, the risk rises up to 20% and patients with a heart score above 7 have an average risk of 50%. Thank you, Barbara. I think it's worth stressing that the score was developed and validated in the undifferentiated chest pain patients that present to the ED. That's totally true, Will, and I think that one of the most exciting aspects of the heart score is the fact that it's so easy to calculate, easy to remember, and you do not need a computer to calculate. So, why don't we show the audience how to calculate a heart score? The history element of the heart score is the most subjective one and requires a careful assessment before deciding whether to score it 0, 1 or 2. This is our approach. When the history of the patient contains mainly specific elements such as left-sided, crushing, squeezing or heavy chest pain that radiates to the left or right arm, to the shoulders or to the jaw, or if the chest pain is associated with vomiting or sweating, then this history is more suggestive of cardiac ischemia and should score two points. If the patient reports pain on exertion, such as walking upstairs or strong emotion, then this is also more suggestive of cardiac ischemia. Alternatively, if the history of the patient contains mainly non-specific elements, such as right-sided pain that is stabbing or reproducible with direct pressure, or movement, and worse on deep inspiration, then this history should be scored zero. The duration of symptoms is important. Pain that lasts seconds or less than a couple of minutes is unlikely to be ischemic chest pain. Other less specific components include nausea, shortness of breath, and pain that does not radiate. When the history contains both specific and non-specific elements, then this should score one point. For the scoring of the ECG, two points are given in case of ST deviation, which is elevation or depression greater than two millimeters in at least two contiguous leads or new T wave inversion. One point is given when the ECG shows non-specific or old repolarization disturbance, such as non-contiguous T wave inversion, left bundle branch block, or a paced rhythm and naught points are given if the ECG is normal. The scoring of age is based on cutoff values of 45 and 65 years. The scoring of risk factors is based on the established risk factors for atherosclerosis, namely hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, positive family history, diabetes, smoking or obesity. When the patient has three or more risk factors, or if they have an established history of coronary artery, peripheral vascular disease, or stroke, then two points are given. One point is given when the patient has one or two risk factors, and zero points if there are no risk factors known. The scoring of troponin is based on the first troponin measurement at the ED. In the original heart studies, which were conducted prior to the widespread use of high sensitivity troponins, two points are given 
when the troponin level is more than three times the reference value, one point is given for a troponin between one and three times the reference value, and zero points are given when the troponin is below the reference value. Whilst this has been shown to be a safe and effective strategy, the heart pathway with two sequential troponins and the arrival of newer high sensitivity troponin assays are changing the way we use and apply the heart score. And this will be discussed later on in the video. So now you know how to calculate a heart score, why don't we show you how this might work in practice? Hello. Hello. Hi, my name's Caroline Fitton. I'm one of the accident and emergency registrars. Oh, thank you. I understand you've been having some chest pain. Yeah, when I was at work this morning. That was about four hours ago. Are you still in pain now? No, it's not too bad now. OK, good. I'm glad to hear you're feeling a bit better. Would you be able to tell me what the pain felt like? It was like a pressure pain, but it felt worse when I was breathing in. Okay. Did it spread anywhere? Into your neck or uh, down your arm? My upper back and my shoulder. OK. How long did it last for? About two minutes. Have you had a pain like this before? Uh, yeah, recently when I was running for a bus, but I uh, didn't think much of it. OK. Do you find if you're exerting yourself, such as going upstairs or if you're feeling stressed, that it brings the pain on? No, not really. It's only when my boy asks me for money. <laughs> OK. And have you ever been to see your doctor about a pain like this before? Or are you on any medications? Yeah, I'm on medication. I'm on high blood pressure tablets. I think they're called Randy Pill. Ah, Rami Pill. Oh, Rami Pill. All right, so. OK. And do you have any other medical conditions, such as diabetes or high cholesterol? Well, last time I went to the doctors, no. All right. Do you smoke? Uh, I used to, but I pack, packed up about three years ago. OK, that's good. And do you mind if I ask you how old you are? I'm 62. And did your mother or father or any of your siblings have any heart disease or any of them have a stroke? My father had a heart attack when he was about mid-50s. OK. And that's about all I know. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much for that. OK. I'm going to have a look at your ECG. Your blood results will be back shortly. And then I'll come back and have a chat. Right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. See ya. Well, that was interesting because the history did not sound like classic angina, but there were certainly elements suggestive of cardiac ischemia. So I think this history would score a one. Now for the ECG. I see that there is some non-specific T wave inversion in V3 to V6. So this would also score a one. If, however, we had an old ECG that showed that this was new, we might consider scoring this a two as it could represent new ischemia. Mr. Giddings is 62, so he would score 1 for age. And in terms of risk factors, he has a father who had an MI in his 50s, and he has hypertension. He did smoke, but because he has quit more than 90 days ago, we would not score this as a risk factor. So that makes two risk factors and would score a 1. So all we have to do at this stage is add the high sensitivity troponin which in this hospital has a sex-specific cutoff of 34 nanograms per litre in men and 50 nanograms per litre in women. In this case, Mr. Giddings has a troponin of 27, which is below the cutoff, and in the traditional interpretation of heart score, would score a naught. This gives a total heart score of 4 and would put the patient into an intermediate risk category. So the question you might have is, what are the next steps for managing a patient such as this? Ah. Thanks for waiting. Okay. So we've got your blood results back and they're negative, so that's good news for the moment. What we will need to do though is to do another repeat test just to make sure and be extra cautious. If that test comes back positive, what we would need to do is to admit you to hospital. If it doesn't, we'll be able to send you home and we'll bring you back to the rapid access chest clinic. Do I need to be worried? I don't think you do need to be too worried at the moment. We're just being extra cautious okay. that nothing's happening. And you're in the right place for treatment, if anything is. Thank you. So let's have a look at some of the developments in troponin science that will help us to decide further investigation and treatment. So Barbara, as we've just heard, the original heart studies were done with conventional troponin and based on the first troponin performed in the ED, irrespective of time of onset. And this identified approximately 30% of patients who had a heart score of three or less with a MACE risk of around 2%. But I recently read an article by Martin Than and colleagues saying that a lot of ED physicians still don't feel comfortable with discharging patients that have that kind of short-term MACE risk. 
How would you respond to this? I think it's important to clarify that the events in the heart validation studies were not missed maces, since this mace rate also incorporated non-cardiac death and elective PCIs. So the actual risk of ischemic chest pain related mace is probably significantly lower. That's really interesting. But in the spirit of seeing whether we could reduce the risk further, I've read the article by Simon Mahler who's developed the heart pathway which relies on observation and repeat troponin testing. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Simon Mahler developed a randomized controlled trial that compared usual care to the heart score with a repeat conventional troponin three hours later. This pathway reduced the 30-day MACE rate in the low heart category to 0.6%. So significantly lower. The heart pathway therefore looks pretty promising to me, but as I understand it, this strategy demands a longer observation period and two troponin tests in most patients with chest pain. Do you think that's reasonable? I think this is really a question of risk tolerance per institution or country. But I think that if a short period of observation and repeat troponin testing prevents subsequent admission and unnecessary testing, then this is a good thing. I would also like to say that the American College of Emergency Physicians have recommended that in cases where the risk of four-week maze is below 2%, the dangers of over-investigation actually outweigh the risk of missed cardiac events. I think that's a really important point to stress to our viewers. Um, but I was also wondering, with the arrival of high-sensitivity troponin, whether this has been a game-changer and how would we incorporate this into the heart score? I think that the main development in the most recent studies on troponin is that we are no longer interested in just the 99th percentile cutoff for the high sensitivity assays, but also what is referred to as the limit of detection, the level below which it becomes difficult to quantify the troponin. Because the new high sensitivity troponin tests are so sensitive, this means that when a patient comes in with chest pain and has an initial troponin below the limit of detection, this in itself is an extremely good negative predictor of MACE. To summarize here, if the heart score is low and the high sensitivity troponin is below the limit of detection, then I think the discharge home with appropriate safety netting advice is probably completely sufficient. If on the other hand, the heart score is high, that is seven or more, the troponin value is above the 99th percentile, and they require admission and further workup. Unfortunately, patients don't always fall into those nice neat categories because the pain could have been very recent onset, it could be ongoing or might have returned since the original uh, episode. As we all know, as emergency physicians, sometimes the history can be completely unreliable. So what do you think the options are over here to the clinician? I think this is where repeat troponin testing at three to six hours becomes important because it allows us the time not only to pick up changes in the troponin, but also to revisit the history and look at serial EKGs. There's also been quite a bit of discussion around uh, looking at delta troponin and whether we should be looking at an absolute or relative increase or decrease in the repeat troponins to decide whether someone's having an ACS. Also, there's that other kind of issue of what happens when the troponin is approaching the 99th percentile. What are your thoughts on this? There's no clear consensus on how to interpret the delta troponin, but we will address some of the considerations in supplemental notes to this video. I think that if there is a significant change in the high sensitivity troponin value that is approaching the 99th percentile, then you should err on the side of caution and consider doing an additional troponin. So I think the other important thing to communicate here is that whilst protocols that incorporate the high sensitivity assays are giving us some really useful data to help guide decision making, we shouldn't neglect the importance of triangulating this data with the clinical picture and the supplemental or serial ECGs that we perform. And as with everything in medicine, Will, there are few absolutes. Let's not forget the importance of communicating your assessment of the risk to the patient in front of you in a manner that respects who they are and what their context is. This is known as shared decision-making and has been well studied by Eric Hess. 
health systems differ nationally and locally in terms of the way that they are configured to manage patients with chest pain. But the principle of shared decision making is universal and wherever possible we should be focused on empowering the patient to make informed choices about their care. Thank you Will. I hope that we've given you a good overview of the heart score how you calculate it and how you can use it in your own institution with different sets and different protocols of troponin. Thank you so much for watching our video today and good luck. We would like to thank the Homerton University Hospital Emergency and Education and Learning Departments for their support during this project and in particular to our main sponsors Abbott, Crievo, Rebel EM, Hippo Education and MD Calc without whose generous assistance these videos just would not have been possible. Thank you, you totally rock.